Hi, everyone, and welcome to Stampin' Chat with Gina Kay. I am Gina, and I am so excited to have you here with me this evening. I was just scanning through all the comments, and I see people joining us from all around the world. And uh, thank you for that. It means so much to have you guys all here. So tonight's theme is, let me pull up that. Tonight's theme is affirmations for tough times. And I know a lot of us are struggling right now because the weather's starting to get nice. We really want to get outside. We're worried about social distancing. We're not sure we're wearing the right kind of mask. We have all of those kinds of thoughts going in our head. And um, it is a tough time. So I wanted to share with you a bunch of different affirmations and I'll share with I'll share them with you throughout the evening so we can be crafting at the same time. But I have this book, this journal. This was a book that a lot of times when Rena and I would teach classes, wherever we would teach classes, we would go to the local paper stores. Of course, we were teaching at paper crafting stores, but we would visit stationery stores. Sometimes we'd go to Target and we would pick up journals. Rena and I are both very addicted to journals. So we would always get journals and our favorite pens and we would work on recipes and sharing things like that. But I really like when I see an affirmation or I read a quote, I try to turn it into some sort of affirmation and I write it down in this book. So I've picked several of my favorites to share with you uh, tonight. So the first one that I want to share with you is one of the most recent ones that are in this book. There's a lot in this book, too. There's also a whole plan of a beginner's class that I'm working on. So um, different videos that will be part of a beginner series. So I do want to share the very first affirmation. It's the last affirmation that I wrote in the book. And I think we can all maybe think about this in... Uh, if you think about it in this way, maybe it will help a little bit. My affirmation is, I'm not stuck at home. I'm safe at home. So that really helped change my thought process because when I feel stuck and I feel like I really want to go out, I want to see friends and I want to just go out to dinner and do those things and it's not there for me. It's really easy for me to say, oh, I'm stuck at home and I really wanna do these things. But if I can change my mindset to, I'm not stuck at home, I'm safe at home. Hopefully that makes you feel a little bit better inside. Well, welcome, everybody's coming in. Now I wanna tell you, we have a, a special guest in the comments tonight. Um, my friend Heidi from Simon Says Stamp is here and um, some of you may know that we are shipping pretty slowly right now. And that's not a problem because everybody's shipping slowly if they can ship at all. A lot of stores, a lot of non-essential businesses aren't even shipping. So we're shipping very slowly right now. But the other problem that we have is we're actually out of stock on a lot of items. And I know there are a lot of items that you guys are interested in. So tonight, Heidi from Simon Says Stamp is going to be in the comments. And as I use products, Heidi is going to share links over at Simon Says Stamp so you can find those products there because we're out of so much of this stuff. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't want you to shop at your local stores. You love your local stores. We love your local stores. We love all the stores that carry our products. But we also know while a lot of you are safe at home, you can't get out to your local store. Maybe they're closed right now and they don't have curbside or they don't have any hours available for you to shop. Also, a lot of you don't even have local stores anymore. Those are all closed up. And you might be looking for the products on our site and think, oh, rats, you know, it's out of stock and I'd really like to get it. Well, a lot of this stuff is in stock at Simon Says Stamp. So Heidi agreed to come in and share some links just so that you guys can find those products. So thank you, Heidi, for that. Okay, so tonight we're going to play with a laminator. So I want to show you the laminator that I have plugged in. This is the Royal Sovereign laminator. This is the laminator that Thermoweb has on their website. I also know Simon has it and a lot of our retailers carry this. This is a great laminator. It is the one that Thermoweb tests all of the Thermoweb foiling products and laminating products and also all of the Gina K Designs and Rena K Designs products. So we know it's going to work on this laminator. 
But that being said, if you have a laminator, don't rush out and buy a laminator. Most laminators will do a pretty good job with foiling. If you have something like the Mink, that's like the Rolls Royce, that's absolutely going to work. So don't worry about running out and buying a laminator. Dig around in the basement because you might have one down there that's been sitting down there for a long time. The only thing that you have to make sure is that if you're using a laminator, it's one that heats up because there is cold laminators and you need one that heats up. This one does both. So if you have cold laminating projects that you wanna do, you can do it on the Royal Sovereign, but it also works great with foiling. So I wanna show you a couple of things that we're gonna to use tonight. So we're gonna use a couple of stencils. And this stencil, let me hold it up with some cardstock here so you can see it maybe a little better. This stencil is called the um, Snowflake Mandala. And then we also have this stencil, which is called the Stellar Snowflake, Stellar Snowflake. And we're going to do a couple of Decofoil Transfer Gel things with these two snowflakes. And I'm going to show you two different mediums that you can use on these. And I know mediums is in plural. My husband corrects me all the time. Maybe it is. Medium. Is medium plural or media? I don't know. But I always say mediums and I know it's wrong. So if you're a um, a uh, grammar person out there. I already know it's wrong. I just can't break my habit. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut some cardstock. So let me grab some pieces of cardstock. I'm going to use two colors. So I'm going to use turquoise C. I'm running in my cabinet over here. And I'm going to use blue denim. So blue denim is it's a more blue than our in the navy, but it's still a rich blue. And I really like this blue with the um, Thermoweb, the Gina K Designs Brilliant Blue Foil. See how nicely that looks together and how nice it matches? So I like these two together, but I have to tell you that if you decide to use Brilliant Blue over Turquoise C, do you see all the turquoise highlights that are in that brilliant blue? It looks great with that as well. So you're going to have great luck depending on, um, you know, either one, whichever one you use. Okay, so I'm going to start. I'm going to do an overhead shot. Let me grab my paper cutter. Okay, so let's go to the overhead. And here we go. I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to make it big. I'm gonna do this six by six. There's still plenty over here left over for a single panel for an A2 size card, but I'm gonna make this six by six because our stencils are just about six by six. They're a little smaller, um, but I wanna make sure that when I put this on top that I'm going to get the entire snowflake because then I can cut this in half and I can make two cards. I can cut it on an angle. I can do all kinds of fun things with it, but I can definitely get two cards out of that. So there's no sense cutting a small piece going through all the work just to do half a snowflake. Let's get the whole snowflake done. Then I'm also going to cut a piece of the turquoise C in a six by six as well. And so I'm going the first thing that I'm going to do is do the deco foil transfer gel. And then I'm gonna go on to a couple other things that you can do with your laminator. And then we'll go back and we will foil and flock these pieces. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to use the snowflake mandala. Now, can you see all the glitter on there? Because I have been glittering with this stencil like crazy. And what happens is I have pixie spray on the back. So when I wash the glitter off the front, whatever glitter is kind of running off of it sticks to the pixie spray, but that won't hurt it at all. I'm gonna actually add a little bit more pixie spray to this. So let me... Uh, I'll do it right here on this piece of paper. So this is the pixie spray and it's great for using with um, stencils. And what it does is it allows you to get all these little pieces to stick to the paper and lay flat. So as you gel or glitz or paste, whatever you're doing, you don't pull these up by accident. You get a much cleaner image. So I'm gonna do this over the trash can. 
I also have also have a big box that I do it into sometimes. Um, but I don't have that box here. I think it's across the room and I don't want to run over there and get it because I'll trip over 17 wires and cables. All right, so <coughs> I'm gonna place this down. And you can see now I can kind of press on these and make sure that they're stuck down really well. Now this won't damage your cardstock at all, but it does really help to keep things tight. Now I'm going to use a uh, flock on this piece. So I wanna show you the flock that I'm gonna end up using. This is the Teal Waters flock by Thermoweb. This is not a Gina K product, but um, Rena K has some beautiful flock pieces with them colors. And in this, you get six pieces of flock. So you get a lot, but I thought those two colors might coordinate nicely. We'll see, we'll see how it all turns out, but I think it's gonna be pretty. So um, this flock comes in these six by six sheets. Some of their flock comes in like a taller pack, but you still get about the same amount of flock. You just get more of the smaller sheets. And these are actually a great size for stencils. I really like them. So ThermoWeb has two different kinds of transfer gels now. Now you may have had the original transfer gel. If you have the original transfer gel, you can keep using it. It's really good. But now they've redesigned their transfer gel and now it's called transfer gel duo. And what that means is this can be used with a laminator, but it can also be used instead with a die cutting machine. So instead of using heat to get your product to transfer, you can use pressure from your die cutting machine to get it to transfer. Now tonight we're gonna to use it with the laminator because these are laminator techniques. This is a great product for those of you that don't have a laminator and you still wanna do flock. Because once that flock dries, uh, once this transfer gel dries, it dries tacky. It doesn't dry completely like the old transfer gel. It's got a little tack to it, so you need to put something on it. But the tack allows you to use it with your die cutting machine. So this is what we're gonna use on this uh, snowflake. On my other snowflake, I'm gonna use the Blanco. And the Blanco is a white gel. It goes on white, it stays white, unlike the duo or the old style transfer gel. This is great when you're using bright colored things like Rena's new enamels. You wanna get that real pop of bright color and um, you wanna do it on a dark piece of cardstock. If the transfer gel is white underneath, the true color of the foil or the enamel will show through. So I definitely recommend both of these in your collection because they are definitely used for different things, but they're both awesome. So we're gonna start with the duo. And this looks just like the old transfer gel, kind of looks like mayonnaise. It's the consistency of mayonnaise. And you're gonna spread it on just like you would put mayonnaise onto a piece of bread. So I'm gonna start right in the middle. And because this is a more delicate image, I'm gonna work my way out and turn the snowflake as I go. This way I'm not scooping back onto those smaller details of the stencil. So I'm actually kind of spreading the gel in the direction that the pieces of the stencil go. Now you can, you can put it on nice and thick because you can put back whatever you don't use. So don't worry about that. And I'm gonna keep spreading. This is really fun to do for card projects. It's great for Christmas tags, this technique, with the beautiful Christmas stencils that everybody has. Definitely fun ways to use this. And actually, if you want, you can also put things on top of this like glitter, um, you can use the mica flakes. I think that's what they're called. They're by Tonic, those gilded flakes, because it's sticky and things stick to this transfer gel. Okay, so you can see I'm really smoothing it out. Now, if you wanna have a super, super duper smooth, you can use this. This is the Stencil Pal, and they come in a pack of two, which I love because 
I tend to be working with this stuff and I might do one with glitz and then I might do one with transfer gel and I just, you know, I'm all over the place and I don't want to have to clean it after every time. So it's nice to have two. So some people try to use it this way, but I've not had luck using it this way. This is a comfortable way to hold it in your hand. It kind of curves with your hand and you should use the flat side. So I'm going to just kind of smooth that off. Let's see, I'm just getting a nice smooth. And then you can save all of this into your jar of transfer gel. Now the big key to using any of the gels, the paste, the glitz, to make sure that it stays nice and fresh, usable again, is to get a little bit of water on a paper towel. I have a little bowl of water over here that I'm gonna throw my stencils in so everything doesn't dry. And then just clean the edge. If you clean the edge, you won't fight with it next time you try to open it. And it will help keep your seal tighter. There's this little foam piece in here. But if there's air getting through because it's crunchy around the outside, some of your products can dry out. Okay, so now we have that transfer gel on there. And I'm going to throw this stencil pal into a bowl of soapy water I have off to the side. And I'm just going to clean this one because I'm going to use it again. Okay, and now I'm going to peel off my stencil. Hold that cardstock down. And there we go. Now I do have a little bit here around there, but I can take a, a little knife. Let me find my Tim Holtz craft knife. I can take a little knife and I can just scrape that off where I don't want it. And then if I get stuff where I don't want it, I can go over it and get the foil or the flock off with my mono sand eraser. So we'll just do that. I am probably gonna only use half of this snowflake, but we'll see how it looks. All right. So I'm gonna put this aside and let it dry. This would be a great time to sprinkle uh, glitter on it if you just wanted to glitter it kind of works like a glue that way. But I'm gonna put this aside and let it dry. Okay, so now the next stencil that I'm going to use is the Stellar Snowflake. Oh, thank you, somebody just said our my brilliant blue uh, gl glitter gel is beautiful. I love that glitz glitter gel, that blue. Oh, that was so fun when that came out last holiday season. Okay, I'm gonna, you can see a little bit of that blue right on there. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little pixie spray on this. Okay, I'm gonna give it just a minute to sit, and then I'm going to use the Blanco transfer gel. Now I'm gonna use Blanco on this because I'm going to use some silver foil with this blue, and I want to make sure that nothing dulls the silver. It usually doesn't, but if I was doing it on black and I was using maybe the iridescent foil, something like that, uh, I would definitely want to have the Blanco. So I just kind of got into the habit of using Blanco for foil and enamel and Duo for all of my flock. Okay, there we go. So now this looks exactly the same. Maybe it looks a little whiter. You can see I didn't clean that off this morning when I left and now it's a little crusty. So I'm gonna clean that a little bit later. Okay, and again, I'm kind of going in the same direction. Now there's not a lot of detail on this snowflake that can pull up. So I'm not as worried about this one, but when it has delicate little edges, I know a lot of the Tim Holtz stencils I love the way they look with the deco foil transfer gel and the foil, but they're very delicate and they have little edges that can lift up. So just go in the direction of those edges and you won't have any trouble. You guys probably already know that, but I'm just gonna tell you things as I think of them. Okay, so now for this one, I really like the look of the foil when it's a little bit I don't know how to how to describe it, but when it kind of looks a little bit bumpy, I think that looks really cool. It looks like, 
I don't know, like a rough street or something. <laughs> just like the way it looks. So I'm not going to use the stencil pal on this one. I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to get a paper towel here and clean my palette knife off. And then that palette knife is also going in my soapy water. And then I'm going to clean the edge of my jar, which I should have done this morning. And now I'm going to peel and reveal what's underneath here. Okay, and you'll see that I got transfer gel on the edges, but I don't care about that because I'm going to cut these pieces down. So there we go. So there is my snowflake. And again, like I said, I'm going to trim all that down so it doesn't even matter if foil gets on that. Okay, so this one's going to go over here to dry as well. And let me get this stencil out of here. And then we're going to play with some other products. And I'm going to show you the other products. Let me move this too, because this has gel all over it. We're going to play with some foil mates. Ooh, my ring light is really taken off there. So I'm going to show you how to just do some basic foiling. And for those of you, I just want to welcome everybody. I see so many of you have come in since I started. Welcome, welcome to all of you. Tonight, I'm talking a little bit about some affirmations for tough times. And um, I'm kind of going to be talking about those throughout my process here. So I started off with my uh, my most current one, which is, I'm not stuck at home, I'm safe at home. But another affirmation, I don't know if any of you guys are writing them down, so I'll try to say them a couple times, but um, another affirmation that I really, that really helps me is when I'm really feeling bad, and it's not hard to do these days, right, where you're really feeling bad, you're really feeling down, I have to stop and I have to say, this is a bad moment not a bad life. And that helps me because it's easy when you're in a bad moment to think, oh, life is terrible. It's not terrible. It's the moment that might feel terrible. So it's a bad moment. This is a bad moment, not a bad life. Okay. All right. So these are called foil mates. And this was kind of the original. This is what started it all with my relationship with ThermoWeb because I actually have my own line of foil mates. This is one of them. This is our snowflakes, our large snowflakes. And um, so let me go full overhead so you don't have to look at me talking. Okay, so this is our large snowflakes. These are the ones that I have with ThermoWeb. So I'm gonna show you how to work by foiling a couple of these pieces. So I'm gonna bring my laminator over here. I'm just gonna put it off to the side here. And then I'm gonna cut one of these down. I love this particular design in here. Well, I like both of them really. So each of these, these foil mates by ThermoWeb come in two different styles and you get five sheets of each design, which is enough to make 10 cards of each design. So there's enough for like 20 Christmas cards in here, 20 Christmas backgrounds. Um, but some of these, even the ones that are Christmas, I mean, come on, a diagonal stripe, you can use that anytime. So I'm gonna cut some pieces of both of these. And then in each pack of foil mates, you do get one piece of parchment paper. And parchment paper is what's used to feed it through the laminator. Now, ThermoWeb also has um, big packs of parchment paper. I'll show you that because I always have extra. And the reason why I like the extra pack of parchment paper is because uh, if you get a wrinkle in this, you're definitely going to want to maybe put it aside and use it for transfer gel projects. Don't use it for your foil mates because if there's a wrinkle, you're going to have a black line going through the design. Okay, so let's cut. Let's cut a little. Uh, we'll do a two-inch cut of this. This is going to be a fancy card. Okay, and we'll do that two by five. And I'll just tell you the measurements as I go. This way, if you watch it on the replay, you'll be able to hear the measurements again. And then I'll do a square panel for this one. I'll do that like three by three. This way, I know I can get a whole bunch of these out of here. And you can mix and match these. So keep all of these pieces because 
just foiling that and hanging it on a package and then on the back stamping to and from. It's a great little sparkly tag. So all these little pieces are so useful. Okay. So now one thing that we recommend whenever you're doing something with um, the foil is to put a little shim in this parchment and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna just turn the camera on me for a second because I wanna show you guys something. A lot of people ask me this. This is the way I store all of my foil and foil mates products and everything to do with ThermoWeb. I have this refrigerator bin. This is the Jennifer McGuire method of storing stamps. I store all my foil this way. And what I do is I'll put the foil mates together with the stamp sets and the, and the dies that coordinate. But for my foil, I take the foil out of the pack. I like to cut it in half or at least some of them in half so they're easy to grab for card size. And then some of them I'll leave the full size in the back and then I label it and oh my goodness, do not call me right now. <laughs> I thought I turned notifications off. But um, so this actually uh, is a great way. These are the large stamp storage pockets. It's a great way to store things. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. And I'm going to use some of the radiant red. So let me go to the overhead again. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the radiant red foil. This is a brand new pack. And I'm going to see. I, I moved away here for a second. Oh, do I have any? Yes, I do. Okay. So I got to tell you, glitter and green is one of my most favorite foils for Christmas with the radiant red. I know it's a real jelly bean kind of green, but it's really super fun. So I should have some radiant red already cut up. Let me see if I have that. I told you guys I don't plan. I go from shipping orders to coming home and just hoping for the best. And you guys are all so patient with me and I really appreciate that. Okay, so here is a nice tall skinny piece because I have lots of pieces left over from other projects. That might work. Let me see, let me find another one here. Okay, that one looks pretty good. It has a weird mark in it, but hopefully that won't transfer. And then I'm gonna get a small piece of this green. So that's too small. So I have these all kind of up already and then I'll just cut this one down to fit. So let me get my scissors. I use two kinds of scissors for foil. I use the Tim Holtz. These are the small snips. Love these because they're serrated and that's nice because it grabs the foil and I also really like the Brutus Monroe scissors and I think I think Simon Says Stamp probably has both of those. I don't sell those but um, they have both of them and these scissors are both really awesome. So I'm gonna trim this. And I know that seems like a weird piece to save, but I'll tell you, you can even do rainbow patterns and that thin little strip of green might be all that you need. So save it all. It's all so pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to get a piece of cardstock. So I cut some of this Gina K Designs uh, layering weight white cardstock into just half sheets. And I'm gonna use a half sheet inside this parchment paper as a shim. And what this is gonna do is, this is gonna act like a shelf. So the parchment paper isn't gonna be quite so flimsy, but it's still thin enough that it doesn't create, you know, too much of a problem. But that little bit of extra thickness actually increases the pressure in your laminator. So foil, actually works with both heat and pressure. So the pressure is good. A little bit of extra pressure is very good. And I'm gonna lay that there. Boy, I really, that's really cutting it close. There is no room for error, but I can always cut it down, right? So let's see if I can get them both in here. I don't know if I can get them both in here. Let me see. I'm gonna try. If I can't, I'll do one at a time. And then this one, and you can see I have the design face up and I'm putting the foil pretty side up. And that's how you wanna lay them into your parchment paper. 
And then let's bring this a little bit closer here so you can see. Then I'm going to feed this in with the fold of the parchment paper going in first. And I'm going to hold it there just until I know that this piece made it in. And then I'm going to let go. So the hardest part is the waiting because it is so fun to see what happens at the end. Now the parchment paper is really, really good to use. You're gonna get the best results with parchment paper, but if you don't have parchment paper and you wanna do this right away and you have some of these other things, if you have something like typing paper or tracing paper, just don't use wax paper because wax paper has wax on it and the wax will melt and get all over your laminator. Okay, so let's see how this looks. I have hope, okay. All right, so look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? That's like a candy cane. I love that. And see this piece here? You can save that and you can use that for something else. You can put it onto toner paper. You can, um, you can glue it down onto white paper if you want. There's a lot of things that you can do with that. And that will be for another video. And then this one, Ooh, look how pretty that is. Isn't that amazing? Now, if you guys have laser printers at home and you have your own designs, you can design your own on at home. The only thing is, if you don't get great results, it may be because of the cardstock that you're using. These are all printed on the Gina K Designs 80 pound layering weight cardstock. So they are so. I mean, if, if you guys haven't tried our cardstock, you have to try it because it's so smooth. Just people will say to me, I didn't get the same results and I'm using Nina. Nina is a great cardstock and it's super great for coloring with Copics and colored pencils. But when it comes to stamping and foiling, you want to get that perfect impression without any of the black spotting. You need a really super smooth cardstock because any little imperfection the foil can't get into. And if not quite as smooth, might have a little more tooth in the paper, then the foil can't sink down into it. All right, so we have those two pieces. Now, I think what we're gonna do next, and I'm gonna switch over to, I'll leave these two pieces here on the camera. I'm gonna switch over to my face for a second. Um, I'm gonna cut out, eye, and you know I don't like to do that under the camera because it's just, it's too close. So I'm gonna use my Spellbinders machine here. And I am going to cut out one of these. And these are the Foil Mates Holiday Cheer. Now, these are great for using the circles dies, ovals dies. You can even use rectangle dies on these. But I'm going to do one of these big ones that needs a circle die. And these were all designed to coordinate with my circle dies. And I know a lot of you guys already have the circle dies. So it'll be easy for you to... Um, to find a match. But if you don't have my circle dies, it's okay because circles are circles and you can probably find a circle die in your collection. But these are the ones I'm talking about, they now come in silver, but they're the, the uh, double stitched and the single stitched. So I'm going to pick one of these designs and I'm gonna pull the sheets out and then I'll put the overhead camera on again. Um, I need to get new glasses. I buy all my glasses at Walgreens. These are my reading glasses and I buy them all at Walgreens and I have not been into a Walgreens since I want to say like March 15th maybe was my last Walgreens trip and it's May and I was a like Walgreens every other day kind of girl. So I am struggling and I need new glasses because I throw them in my purse and they get all scratched up. Okay, so we are going to we're gonna cut one of these out here. I'm just gonna cut down this one. And then I'm gonna cut this one out with one of the dies. And I'm gonna use, I think it's the medium sized die that will fit on that pearly. So let's do the overhead. Here you go. So that's the one I'm gonna use. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Okay. So I'm trying to read some of the questions here and I'm not sure. So how do you know what you can use with it? Uh, do you mean like what kind of designs? 
The foil mates are actually printed not with ink, but with resin. And resin is like a plastic. It's a, it's a black toner and it's a plastic. It's a commercial grade. And so what happens is when this goes through the heat with the foil on it, the black, because it's plastic, melts. And then the foil sticks to it. And as it comes out the other side, it cools and then they're bonded together. So you can't just do this with any, you can't stamp with ink and get this look. I know Heidi Swap has a toner ink out and I've heard good things about it, but um, these are all pre-printed, pre-designed for you. And then you just have to cut them out, foil them and they're ready to go. So. It's kind of nice, part of that work is done, especially when you're mass producing Christmas cards. Sorry, my hand, I didn't want to do that, but okay. So I have cut this out and there it is, cut out with that double stitch die. Okay, while I have my die cutting machine out, I'm going to cut a black piece of cardstock out. So let me find a black piece of card stuff. I know I have one around here. Let me tell you another affirmation that I really like. Another affirmation that I really like when I'm struggling with something, which these days it's every day something, right? Um, I say to myself, so far my track record of getting through difficult times is 100%. It's pretty good, right? 100%. Still here, still kicking. So that's another affirmation that I really like. And I'll tell you one more. I really like one, one that says, um, I, made a, I may not have reached my goal, but I'm closer today than I was yesterday. And that's a really hopeful thought because success is not a straight line. It's all over the place, right? But today you're closer than you were yesterday. All right, I'm gonna put this back. I'm gonna try not to smash any of my drying snowflakes. And now I'm going to foil this piece using some of the red. So this is actually going to be a finished card. I can't believe we're gonna have a card finished. And then I'm gonna foil those other pieces for you that we uh, transfer gelled. Okay. And uh, for those of you who are just joining us, you may see some links coming through the threads on both YouTube and Facebook. That's my friend Heidi. Heidi owns Sign and Says Stamp. And because we're out of so many products, Heidi is helping me to make sure that you guys can get what you want. They're shipping a little faster than we are because they have staff and we don't have any staff yet. They are, their state is a little farther along than Wisconsin. So, um, Another thing, I just want to tell you, one thing that kind of helps, if you work in an area where you have lots of um, uh, glitter and embossing powder and stuff, you might have a lot of dust in your workspace. So if you have a Swiffer duster, these are really good to wipe off your foil mates first. And you can also wipe the back of the foil first. And this way, if there was any little thing that was gonna ruin the design, sometimes that will help to get it off. Okay, so this is going in the laminator. It was design side up and pretty side of the foil up. The only one that's tough to know if it's foil side up or not is the um, this one, the silver sparkling silver, but you can definitely tell the difference. Some of the silver foils that they have, you really got to look um, a little bit closer, but you'll definitely be able to tell. Now, while this is going through the laminator, I'm going to cut two more pieces of black cardstock. So I want to finish this card. So I have a three by three square. So I'm going to make this one three and a quarter by three and a quarter, or three and an eighth by three and an eighth. And then, so that should give me that nice little shadow layer. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And then this one is two by five. So I'm going to go two and an eighth by five and one eighth. Okay. Two and an eighth. 
Oh, I think this is by five already. Oh no, it's five and an eighth. Yay! That one's already cut. Okay. So that'll look good on my card too. So I'll have those two pieces. And now this has come out of the laminator. So let's peel and reveal and hope for the best here. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Ah, this is one of my favorites. I feel like this is even cute, like for a Christmas ornament where you can do two of them and glue them front to back and it can just flip around on your Christmas tree. It's just so pretty. Even a little magnet for the fridge. Do a lot with that one. Ah, love it. Okay. So now let's start putting this card together. And then the last thing I'm going to add is this because I might want to just see how that looks on a snowflake too. So I'm gonna get a white card base. And then I'm going to tape these pieces together. Sorry for my dirty mat. This is not really a mat. I've said this before. I know a lot of you guys wonder what I use to work. I have white for Joe on my hand, I see it. Um, it is actually shelf liner that I use because it's an, it doesn't glare. Sometimes stuff glares and this doesn't glare. But I should have, I should have a piece of hard stuff on here just so that nothing glares. There, that's easier to see. Okay, so this is gonna go on my card right here. And then I'm gonna add, add these two together. like that. Okay. So I'm going to turn it this way and just see if it's a little better. Every once in a while, it works one way and not the other when I cut a square. I don't know why, but it looks better that way. So that will go here. And then this will go right down there. I love that layout. That is just a fun Christmas layout. And you know, if you don't have any mojo, it is just so fun to just cut panels out and foil them and just watch the pretty foil. It's so much fun. And then you have all these little elements ready to go when you want to put your Christmas cards together. So foiling is really a fun way to make holiday cards, tags, gift card holders, Christmas ornaments. Foil is really fun. We cut that one very well. Okay, so we'll do that there. And then trying to not get in the way of the laminator. We'll put this one right here. And I like to make sure that like I have white space to the black kind of even on both sides. See what I'm saying? Like the same amount of white space coming in on both sides. And then I will tape this. This is the double stitched circle. I'm gonna tape it onto the single stitched circle. And that gives me my cute little shadow layer. If you hear scratching, my little puppy is in here. My little doggy, Teddy, y'all know Teddy. Teddy is still doing okay. For those of you who are newer to my lives, I was telling some of my live friends here that Teddy has a little tumor on her tongue and um, there's nothing they can do for it. So each day we look at her and each day she's doing well. So we're very thankful. And so that's gonna go right there. So what do you guys think? Do you like this card layout? I like it. I think it's fun and it's festive, but can you see Teddy? Let me see if I can get Teddy. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get her. Come here, honey. Come here, baby. Come here. They want to see you. Oh. I have to be really careful how I hold her because she's got really bad arthritis in her shoulder. Here she is. Hi, Teddy. Can you say hi to everybody? Look at her little gray beard. Oh. <laughs> Can you say hi? This is Teddy, my little Pomeranian, 17 years old on April 1st. And uh, she's been with us. Feels like forever. She was um, my girl's first dog, so that's Teddy. All right, honey, you go back and find a spot to lay down. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. So back to the overhead. So now, yeah, sorry about the delayed sound. I don't know what that is. It happens sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. But as long as we're just doing the overhead, it'll all make sense. Yeah, oh, thank you guys all for your nice comments about Teddy. Okay, so now it's time to work on this. So I'm gonna take this snowflake. Now, I will admit to you that I had one of these already done because this gel takes a little bit longer. Um, so this is, here's the other one that I just did. Pretty much the same. But I did one early this morning because I knew I was going to do laminator techniques and I knew that this one had to dry. The Blanco dries a lot faster. This seems to dry just a little bit slower. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the sparkling silver on this snowflake. So I'm going to cut a full sheet because I need bigger than a half sheet for this. Thank you guys so much. She is a sweet little dog. She's Pomeranian. We got her when Rena was, I think, in first, just started first grade. So we got her that summer. Um, and then Rena started first grade. And now Rena is 22. And uh, boy, it just, it's crazy how fast the years go, right? Okay, so we're going to use some sparkling silver. This is one of my favorite foils. I don't use one a lot because I always forget that I can foil on dark cardstock and it really, really looks spectacular. So I'm just gonna cut this to about the same size. Get my scissors out again. Yeah, it's really sparkly. No barking, Teddy. <laughs> So Tom is usually downstairs watching the lives. And when he hears Teddy bark, sometimes he'll come up and he'll get her. But if not, that's okay, because you guys know she's there. Okay, now for this, I'm gonna see if I have a bigger piece of parchment paper. So this is the big size parchment. And I might, I, don't, I think the other one might be a little too small. So I'm going to cut a new one. And the parchment paper that you get from ThermoWeb is huge. I mean, it is like big sheets like this folded in half. It's too big to even show you under the camera. It is, I'll show you the front shot so that you can see what I'm talking about. This is like, this is huge, right? Huge. And then what, what we usually do is, you know, cut, cut the side off and then fold it in half this way but I wanna make it a little bigger than that. So I'm going to actually, let me go to the overhead only. I'm gonna cut this just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna cut it right down the side here. And this will be for my six by six ones. Okay, so that, I don't think for this, for, because it's not a foil mate that I need a shim. I'm just gonna put it right into the parchment and I'm gonna send it right through the laminator. Remember, always send it through with the fold side because these loose pieces get caught up in the wheels. All right, here we go. Okay. So again, you know, the hard, the hard part is the waiting for it to go through. So I'll give you another couple of my affirmations. Um, another one is that I like is, Everything is working out for my highest and greatest good. So when you're struggling, everything is working out for your highest and greatest good. It's not always pretty, but it's always what it's meant to be. And challenges are opportunities to grow and learn. That never feels like it at the time, but it's certainly the truth. Those challenges are how we grow. We don't grow when you know, when everything's easy. That means we already know how to do those things and we know how to get through those things. We grow and we learn through the challenges. All right, so I'm hoping for the best here. I'm excited to see it. Let's go full overhead. All right, here we go. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? 
So you all need Decofoil Blanco right now. Make sure you put that in your cart because that, and I really think the Blanco just pumps up the silver. I really do. Because these are all a little bit thin and transparent and having that white behind it, wow, I just love it. And then this can always be, I should show you this. I'm gonna show you this. Because this is a knockout, you gotta see it. All right, so this is deco foil. I'm gonna just go over tonight. I hope you guys don't mind. We're just gonna be late. We're gonna be here longer. This is the toner sheets, the deco foil toner sheets pack. This has three pieces of toner sheets in it. They also have one called peel and stick toner sheets. Those are those come in a two pack. Now, both of them are great. They're used for different things. If you just want to make a card front, use the regular toner sheets because you get three pieces in here. But if you're going to do foil and stuff on pieces that you want to die cut, get the peel and stick because then no matter how detailed it is, once you cut it out, you've already got the sticky stuff. It turns it into a sticker. So they're both really good, but I'm using the peel and uh, I'm not using the peel and stick. I'm using just the plain. And then I'm going to cut one sheet of this. And this is pretty thin, the plain toner sheets, because this is going to be really cool too. All right. Let me find my paper cutter. I threw it somewhere. Okay. I'm going to cut. Let me move this out of the way. You can see all my lights and all this shiny stuff. So I'm going to cut a piece that's a, about like five and a quarter by five and a quarter. I don't really No, I'll cut it six by six just to be safe. Because that's how big my about how big my piece of foil is. Okay, so toner paper is printed, solid printed with the same resin that they use to print the foil mates designs. So the same stuff that was used to do this, to print all of these, this is just that same toner solid on here. And then you can take this negative piece, and you can put this on top, and then let's run this through the laminator with this parchment paper. Okay, so now this is going through the laminator and I have the toner paper black side up and the foil pretty side up. And I'm gonna send that through and I'm gonna hope for the best. But in the meantime, can we just please look at this again? Look at how gorgeous all that detail is. Oh. Oh. So, you know, it's, it's sickening to think about cutting this in half, but you could cut that in half. To make a card, you can also do a smaller circle in the center, something small and foiled using a smaller design. That's so pretty. I'm gonna have to think about what I'm gonna do with these to make cards before I post them. Cause I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do, but I think, you know, it might be pretty, I could emboss something in silver. That would be pretty. Or I can use one of the smaller circle designs and do it in silver and just pop it right over the center of the snowflake. So I'm gonna look at that. I'm not gonna have time to do it all on screen, but I will look at it and see what, what I can come up with. Okay, I don't know if this is gonna work completely. I'm gonna try sending it through this way. I think my my parchment paper was wrinkled, so it's gonna ruin it because I didn't notice that. But we can still use parts of it, so I'm not worried about it. I'll show you and then we can cut a part of it and use it for a card. Let's see what happens here. But this, so for example, see where I have some silver over here where I don't want it a little bit there. You can take a mono sand eraser, which is the one tool that every crafter needs because it removes ink smudges and everything else. And you can just sand those right off. So if you get anything where you don't want it, just sand it right off. See, it doesn't ruin it. it doesn't ruin the cardstock. But sometimes you get strays. Same with embossing powder. 
If you do embossing powder and you get something where you don't want it, this is a little bit big, but it's working. It took the, it took the foil off, but the uh, Blanco is still there. I'm probably cutting that piece off, but these little dots here and there, that just gets them right off. All right. This is not perfect, but you'll get the idea. Okay. So when you peel this off, see how, and I'll just cut that because I had wrinkles in it, but you see how now you have the opposite image. So I cut that in half and make that a design on my card coming in. Well, I could do that right now. Let's do it. I'll just cut off the part that didn't look perfect. Right like that. And then I'll go to here. Trim the little edge off of here. And then go to five inches here. And that would be a really cool panel coming in on the side of a card. Very graphic design. So you can see how you can use all of these little leftover pieces. That would even be pretty coming from the top of the card. Isn't that nice? It's got kind of, it's silver, but it's got kind of an iridescent to it too. So it picks up a lot of, a lot of colors. Yes, you definitely can put another color on top of that. I just saw somebody say that. Where is it? Uh, let's see. I love the negative pieces. I bet you could put another color on top like purple and it would fill in the black spaces. It absolutely does. So you could fill in with red or you could fill in with the brilliant blue and you could have blue and silver. So that's great. Thank you for that reminder. Okay. So now we're going to do the flock one. Let's see if I can find that. So here now you can see that went on white, but now it's kind of clear. And that's how you know that it's done. But if you touch it, it's still tacky. So you definitely um, need to put something on it. it you wouldn't want to just leave it clear. So let me find that flock that I took out. Oh, my goodness. If you saw this workspace right now, here it is. So the difference with flock, and I'm going to find my parchment paper again. I don't think this will be a problem for this. Now the difference with flock, with, with foil and with the enamels that Rena came out with, um, you want pretty side up. So when you put your foil down, you're gonna lay it on there so that the pretty side is looking for you. With flock, it's the opposite. You wanna put this on top facing down. So the pretty side is facing your cardstock. And then we're going to run it through the laminator. Okay. Flock is really fun. If you've never tried flock and you've been thinking, oh, I don't know if I would like that, you've got to try it because let me show you a card while that's going through. This is a card that Karen Hightower made. And look at that. That was the, um, the waffle cone stencil that's part of Rena's new Sweet Stuff collection. And look at how pretty that is. It's just beautiful. So there's so many fun things that you can do with flock. This is the pop and pink flock. This is part of the Rena K Designs collection. And this is the enamel. So you can see the enamel kind of looks like glossy nail polish. And that works the same way as the foil. So enamel is like foil, but the flock you put on upside down. All right, here it comes. Hoping for the best. <laughs> you know, when you don't plan, sometimes you get what you get. Okay. So here's another affirmation. I'm going to say it before I reveal this, just in case. I'm doing the best I can, and I won't feel guilty for things that are out of my control. That's a good affirmation. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh, yeah. Look at this. Isn't that so cool? 
Look how beautiful that is. And I know you can't see this because it's not like super clean, but it's fuzzy. That's what's so cool about that. It's fuzzy. And then you can use this piece because what's left behind, it pulls the flock off, but it leaves just a thin layer of it on there. So you can cut this piece down and use it for an opposite card. In fact, you could even do a half and half card. I might do that for my sample where I'll do, I'll cut it down the middle and I'll line them up and make half and half. So that is what the flock looks like. All right, so we have some foil here, we have some flock, and we have some of the sparkling silver foil on the transfer gel. So I'm gonna work on some cards for these and then I'll be sharing them over in our Facebook group. Um, if you are new to our Facebook group, we have a Facebook group called Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. And we would love you to be part of it. Uh, it's a really great group. It's very, very bunch of very, very supportive people from all different levels of stamping, from people who just started stamping last week to people that have been stamping for 20 years. So let's see, can you use the negative foil on the negative flock? The negative foil on the negative flock. I don't think so because, um, but that would be really cool, wouldn't it? That would be super cool. You know what I have seen people do though, Roberta, because that was a really good suggestion to do something else in here. I've seen people use Copic markers in here and color it a different color. So you definitely could do something like that or colored pencils even, really sharp colored pencils just to get some color off on there. But I, the only way to use the negative with the, um, with the foil is you have to have that black resin, that toner for it to stick to. So like this piece I could do onto a black piece and um, I guess you can't see what I'm doing. Um, so what I was saying is I've seen people use Copic markers in the negative or colored pencils, but you need the black resin. So like this piece you could do on the toner sheet, but um, I don't think you could mix the flock and the foil without having that toner in there. Maybe you could do like the opposite of the foil with some glue and get some flock on there, but I think it would be tricky. But of course, you can always try it. And if, if it happens, let me know because you know I want to see it. If you, can, if you can do it and post it in our Facebook group, I would love to see it. Well, okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed tonight's video and I hope that you'll try some of these techniques. They're really, really fun. The circles were from the Gina K Designs double stitched and single stitched circle dies. Do I need a laminator to use flock? No, you don't need a laminator to use flock. If you use the Decofoil transfer gel that's called Duo, you can also do the same thing that I just did, but through a die cutting machine, and it will work with just the pressure as well. Okay, so I know there were a lot of questions and I probably missed some of them, and I am so sorry if I did. I'll, but always, you can always ask questions in the Facebook group too, because it's not just me, but we have great moderators. We have Barb, we have Sammy, we have Kathy, and we have Karen. And then all of our members are so helpful. They know so much more than me. I mean, they always come up with the solutions. So thank you guys so much. Um, I have a final quote for tonight and uh, here it is. If you wanna reach your full potential, it's better to focus on a new fact, a new passion for life than to live in the past. I'll say that one more time without all the mess ups. If you want to reach your full potential, it's better to focus on a new passion for life than to live in the past. So I'll be posting that quote on my Facebook page and come join us, join our Facebook group. It is a private group. So you'll answer a couple questions and then we'll approve you. I don't even know if we have questions, but we'll approve you, but we keep it real private. So nobody, you know, who isn't into card making or crafting can join. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Heidi, thank you for sharing all the links over to Simon Says Stamp. That's really helpful since we're out of so many of these products, people can get them from you. Or if you have a little store close to you, you can shop there. You can also do curbside pickup or your favorite online store. You guys have a wonderful evening.
We'll be back for Wednesday Whimsy with some fun technique project. I hope you'll join me then. You guys have a great night. I love you all so much and I'll see you